Good morning, everyone. My name is Leo Ratikovsky. I'm a professor here in the physics department. I do condensed matter theory. Uh, so if we haven't met, uh, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to welcome you here all to Boulder. So in addition to being a professor, I'm also the director of the school, and I've been running it for the last 17 years. So I, you know, my job here is to host you here, to welcome you, make you stay here comfortable. And so before we get into lectures in half an hour, I wanted to kind of introduce you to the school, introduce you to Boulder a little bit, just so we get all the kind of formalities, administrative stuff out of the way and make your, make everything run smoother, okay? So again, so welcome. Uh, so I'll just make a few remarks. Uh, uh, you no, no doubt have seen this picture. Here we are situated at the foot of Rocky Mountains. Uh, this is the central location football stadium like any good, well-respected U.S. university. Uh, here's the uh, Gamov Tower where we are. This is Gila Tower, that another notable location on campus. Uh, uh, the, you know, the, loc uh, the dining hall facility, C4C, is somewhere down here. And then the uh, C uh, Kittredge is over, over a little further south of there. This is the Boulder Icon, uh, the, uh, the Flatirons which uh, I undoubtedly you will get to know hiking over the weekends and things. So let me start out with giving you some background on the school. <coughs> so the school was founded in 2000. So this is a seven, uh, 18 school now we're holding. Uh, it was really, the uh, idea was really born with Steve Gervin who decided, who realized that and uh, really uh, pointed out that there's all these schools around the country, uh, around the world actually, uh, Lazouche and Jerusalem Winter School, but there's nothing like that in U.S., even though so much physics goes on in U.S., and basically National Science Foundation pays all this money through grants to send U.S. students to abroad to, to study these schools, and they can still do that, but it, it made sense to have a school like this in U.S., and so that was the idea, and so he kind of pulled the condensed matter community to see theory community to see if there's uh, enough support for something like this. And so then Andy Millis and Matthew Fisher and myself came aboard and uh, joined Steve in this uh, effort to try to, to found a school. And so that finally, we wrote a grant to the National Science Foundation and it was finally supported. And so first inaugural school and in superconductivity was in 2000. Since then, uh, Andy Millis has stepped down. He's still kind of in the background advisory role. And, Christi and we were lucky enough to have Christina Marchetti join us and, uh, and, and be part of running the school, one of the four co-PIs co of the school. Uh, so that's sort of the background of the school. Uh, you want to acknowledge the uh, funding. It comes from DMR, uh, the National Science Foundation. It costs about $300,000 a year to bring you all here and to bring all the uh, uh, eminent lectures here and to, you know, to, to run the school for, for, for the four weeks that you will be here. And so I want to thank Daryl Hess, who's been a uh, staunch supporter of the school over decades now. Uh, and uh, sometimes he shows up. I don't know if he'll come this year. Uh, last year we were lucky he came and, and actually visited with the school. Uh, some of the support also comes from the University of Colorado. <coughs> Certainly all these facilities and things that really appreciate the staff support, the administrative support. Uh, the school has an advisory board of about 20 scientists, uh, who I won't list here, but they're on the website if you browse around. And we, we derive a lot of the wisdom of selecting schools each year and the organizers and the topics from them. Uh, so past schools, you can browse around. It's been extremely broad uh, as condensed matter physics is, uh, ranging from superconductivity to biophysics to quantum information uh, and things like that. So again, you can look. There's a main website of the school, uh, which you undoubtedly have seen. Uh, this year's school is on, as you all know, th so this is not quantum information. This is a uh, frustration and disordered systems, if you're in the wrong class. No. So yeah, so this is a school that would not be possible b without our co-organizers, uh, Patrick, Eric, Francesco, and Lenka. Are you guys all here? Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Lenka, Lenka. Eric, Eric, 
Francesco is dropping his kids. At okay, the so Francesco's running a little late. Don't worry if you haven't met them. We'll have introductions uh, at the end of the uh, this at this at, at the end of this day uh, after last lecture this afternoon. So everybody will get a chance to meet lecturers, organizers, and you will have a chance to introduce yourselves as well. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, so these guys have been working tirelessly uh, over the last year, putting this program together. It takes a lot to put something like this together. Uh, and so we anticipate a fantastic program, and I'm really grateful to your co-organizer, and you should be as well, to, to, to working so hard to put something this fantastic together. Um, OK, uh, so now let me turn to some local details. So I have, so I run the school, I'm the director of the school, but the, you know, I would be lost without my assistants, so, uh, so I want to acknowledge them, but also have you, in, have you get familiarized with them, because if you, if you need certain, you know, things, lo local interesting things like uh, getting a basketball or, or figuring out how to print, uh, or, or something special, then you can, you can ask them. So Rayshawn, maybe stand up. Okay. Rayshawn, he's, he's doing the recording and various other things and uh, setting up the, the, uh, <coughs> the lectures and printing and things. Then Zhang Zhang. Yeah, so these, there are two graduate students, uh, PhD students here at CU. Uh, and then Dakota, who I'm, I'm sure you've communicated with. So Dakota is the most important person because he does reimbursements for many of you. <laughs> we'll do reimbursements for many of you. So if you're coming from a U.S. university, independent of what your nationality uh, is, uh, you will get reimbursed not just, your not only local expenses will be covered, but within certain limits, your travel expenses will be covered. Uh, uh, if you're coming from abroad, welcome. Uh, we're, 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 <laughs> we'll host you here, but we can't pay for your, uh, for your travel, unfortunately. Um, okay, but anyway, so reimbursement is done actually not quite through Dakota. Dakota does the reimbursement, but it's submitted in the main physics office, which is one floor below on the ground floor and kind of down the hallway. And so there's, there's, a, there's staff there that, that will take your information. Even if you don't have all your information, but just so they can take your social security number and uh, any information that you do have, like your home address, that's very useful. And then you can, uh, then Dakota will collect that information later from the uh, staff in the, uh, in the main physics office, and then we'll be able to communicate with you for any other additional information through email. So you'll have library privileges while you're here. That's, I, I think library already has a list of, the, of, of our school, the roster, and so you just show up there, show them your, your, either your C4C uh, meal tag or your, your uh, badge and then you should be able to borrow books, make sure you return them. Uh, there's a CU bike rental uh, station right on campus, just uh, west of here. Uh, you'll discover it by the uh, student union. So you can, you can try to rent bikes there. Of course, there's infinite number of bikes there. This is Boulder, so there's many, many bikes. Uh, uh, commercial bike uh, rental stations and rental uh, and, and bike shops around around the city, so I welcome you to explore that, because Boulder is really bikeable, uh, as you will discover. Um, so there's a rec center facility, so you have, uh, again, your name tag will allow you to get in there, but you have to pay at the door, and there's a, the directory explains, uh, gives some uh, what the fees are. They're, they're not very expensive. Rec center is really fantastic. The, in terms of computers, and not only you have all your lap, uh, laptops with you, but there, if you need a little bit more, uh, there's a lab just down the hall in G116, which uh, has an uh, access uh, with the login information, which is again a new directory that's listed. Um, but I really actually encourage you, unless you you know actually working on something, you need to abandon your laptops and focus on the lectures. That's really what you're here for, rather than you know browsing the web because you're bored with the lecture. Try to get engaged, and I'll, I'll have more to say about that. Uh, no alcohol in public areas. I, let me maybe say it in a different way. Let me apologize for the uh, uh, um, U.S. or particularly CU's uh, draconian alcohol policies, but I have to warn you about it. They, you will get arrested if you, 
If you're drinking like in a public area, there's just, it's embarrassing, especially in front of the, our European uh, international uh, uh, students because, huh? And what about the Russians? No, international students, I think, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly, because that's kind of the need for them. You know. Anyway, um, so yeah, so you can, you know, if you're, if you need to drink, you can drink in your room, <laughs> or you can go down Pearl Street or to the hill you, that you will discover and, uh, and enjoy, you know, doing it in a bar, but uh, they're just <coughs> extremely, extremely sensitive about it. As you saw, if you were at yesterday's reception, last night's reception, uh, registration reception, you know, you get a little name tag, you get a little, uh, you know, for every beer, you, you have to, you know, you have, to, you have a little uh, t sticker or ticket and, and that's it. And they, they have to shut off the beer distribution half hour before the, par you know, the party ends. And anyway, so they're extremely anal about it. So please, uh, I, you know, I've been fighting it for 17 years, but it's the, to no avail. So please just follow their rules. I don't want to be bailing you out. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's have a good time. And if you need to drink again, you can drink in your room. Or in bars. Okay, so there's no meals or housekeeping on weekends. So your your meal card will lay you into the C4C. You, you will discover. Uh, be prepared to gain about 10 pounds, maybe more, because it's a, such it's a pretty fantastic facility as dining halls, university dining halls go. So you'll you enjoy. There are many different cuisines, and if, if you especially they are pretty <coughs> attentive to special uh, dietary needs. But that's only for weekdays. So we have breakfast, lunch, lunch and dinner. Uh, you know, I have purchased over the years soccer balls, basketballs, and we have hiking guides in the back. So if you need a soccer ball or a basketball uh, or anything else, approach me and I'll, uh, I'll try to produce it for you. If we already have it, I'll, you know, I'll bring it in. So I have some, uh, some of the sporting equipment in my office. Uh, I'll bring it in. If you need something else, just ask and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, get it for you. Uh, there's a discussion room in Buckingham, S106. It's kind of a lounge area. There's also a ping pong table, so, so take advantage of it in the evenings. Uh, get games going, competitions, so to make, to add a social aspect to your stay here. Uh, there's a special reserved dining room in the, called Treehouse and C4C. This stands for Center for Community. That's where we're gonna be eating. So it's a giant dining hall, but then on certain days that are listed in the directory, we've reserved it for you. It's, it, uh, this room has about 20 seats, so then you can have more private, like uh, uh, school-related uh, lunches and dinners. Uh, so there's AC in the room, and the, you need to make sure to close your windows. Uh, so things to do around Boulder, okay, well, you Google 10 best things or interesting things to do around Boulder. You know, various lists will come up, but just to point out some things, of course, hiking, again, there are guides in the back with the maps. You surely take advantage of it over the weekend. Uh, please, there's a sign-out sheet for those guides, so please put your name down and the date and, and what you took, just so we can keep track of it. Again, biking, there's all kinds of rental shops. Again, either at CU on the hill, uh, University Hill, which is just west of here. <coughs> Tubing, I have some tubes. So a very uh, fun activity that's very popular in Boulder is to go tubing on the, uh, on the Boulder Creek. Be careful, but uh, we take no responsibility, but I'll provide two be, uh, tubes for you that you can, that you can use for the school, uh, dur duration of school. There's a beautiful Chautauqua Park, again, west, southwest of here, uh, off of Baseline. That's a great like, you know, area to hang out. And there's a lot of little hikes that start, start there, but you know, then they spread pretty pretty far, but you know, there's a various range of hikes. Uh, El Dorado Canyon, if you're a climber, there's that's sort of a mecca of climbing, uh, among many other things, uh, many other places. Rocky Mountain National Park is not too far. You'll need to rent a car uh, to go there. So very often on weekends, uh, students organize trips to the Rocky Mountain National Park. Red Rock Amphitheater, it's beautiful. Um, that's just south of here. And then in terms of place ha to hang out, students, many students hang out on the, on the hill, but if you want something fancy and kind of a, uh, where it, you go down to Pearl Street Mall, that's sort of the downtown walking mall there, you'll discover there's a lot of fun activities there, musicians and various uh, performers and stuff. Uh, so that's a good place to hang out. But if you just want something closer, it's on the hill, just 
across Broadway just west of here. Okay, so you know, there's a very uh, rich scientific program that's been planned uh, for you, and so I think I will, well, maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, I think Patrick's gonna say a few words about that. But first, let me just uh, say probably the more, most important thing is, is to urge you to participate. You know, please don't be inactive. Please focus on, on the lectures. Again, don't cruise the web. Really embrace the school. You'll hear 65 uh, best and brightest students from all over the world have been selected in the highly competitive uh, application process. And so you really want to take advantage of it. This is a really unique opportunity to learn your, this field. And it'll, be, it'll get pretty intense. You know, for now you're all refreshed and ready to go. And, uh, but by the I promise you, by the end of fourth week, you know you will be pretty exhausted. But I urge you to still stick with it because you know this is pretty unique. At the end of four weeks, you go back home, and then you will be, you know, uh, nostalgic about all the excitement and all the all the things that the school get, has to offer. So what does that mean? That means most of our lectures will be on the blackboard. It means it's your job to like not let lectures get away with snowing you. This is not a conference that's supposed to be more at the level of a classroom back in your institutions. So your job is to like pay attention, ask questions. If there's something you don't understand, you ask a question. You interrupt the lecture. And that's, that's why we have hour and a half. That hour and a half contains, you know, it's factored in it, uh, time for questions. You don't have to wait till the end. And chances are, you know, there's no stupid questions. Chances are if you don't, under if you have a question, then your classmates will also have similar question, at least some fraction of them, and they will appreciate you asking. So don't be timid. Everybody's friendly here, and they really want you to learn, not just to sit there and politely nod your head. Okay, so that's, I would say this is the, you know, the most important thing. Uh, also, you know, so we have formal part of the program, which is uh, listed in the, in the directory and also on the walls there. But, uh, you know, Often students uh, go off and do their own thing as well, in addition to the program, as long as it doesn't conflict with the program, organize student seminars, discussions, tutorials, and we can get, you can either be after hours in this classroom, or it could be, we can get another smaller seminar room if you want. Simplest, of course, to have it here, but if you would like to have some smaller environment, then we can get another, uh, another seminar room. N hopefully, s you guys will start like a Facebook page or some other way to communicate, so, we want, you can send uh, emails or communicate through all, with all, uh, with collectively with the full school. So then if there's uh, some announcement, soccer game or something like this, or a hiking trip that's being organized, you can, we can do that very efficiently. So I hope somebody will take charge, somebody who is computer savvy and can set something like this up. So volunteer and, and, and organize. So again, uh, there's going to be a poster session. Basically, we're going to split it up into, there's more to, uh, to, to say about that, but basically we're going to split it up alphabetically, split you up into three groups. There'll be three poster sessions, uh, essentially alphabetically. If, if you have a difficulty with that for some, some reason, just approach one of the organizers and we'll, we'll make special arrangements. Uh, meet your classmates, lecturers. Please wear your name tag, at least for the first couple of weeks, you know, we really, Dakota, you know, worked hard to make this beautiful name tag. Uh, so that's one reason, out of respect to Dakota, otherwise he may not do your reimbursement. But also, uh, because that's a way to, you know, to kind of break the ice and start, you know, I might, might have met you already, but then I'm uncomfortable. And then we're, we're already into a conversation, I want to be able to sneak, and I forgot your name, I want to be able to, uh, Okay, good question. Uh, that's a great question. So yeah, you didn't have to come yesterday. We have all the name tags on the back. Mostly that, that back panel will be used for information that you need. Like there are homeworks there, for example, for one of the lectures already. Uh, but name tags are there. And also you'll, you can pick up one of these packets in the back, which, which contains a director and everything you need, maps and things. Okay, so yeah, so, and so please wear your name tag just so everybody gets to know each other. After two weeks, it won't be as important. Still nice to identify you so, you're, so then you're an officially part of the physics department here for the four weeks, but most importantly, first two weeks to uh, break the ice and be able to facilitate interaction. Uh, last but not least, this is really essential. Uh, every year, you know, so I sent you an email about this. Every year we 
Each class organizes uh, 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 brainstorming sessions and designs in the end comes up, after a couple of weeks, comes up with a design for a t-shirt that represents the school. So you don't want to be one school that doesn't have a t-shirt to represent it. And people really, you know, af years after the school is over, really then identify themselves with the, with the Boulder Summer t School t-shirt. They go to March meetings, they all wear them, they get together <laughs> for dinners and stuff. So you, you really, really, really want to do this. And some of the sample ones over there, you can browse around. I particularly like that one somebody made because they didn't like the nerdy one. Uh, Leo is my homeboy. Uh, so, but there's, there are constraints on the t-shirts. So, uh, you know, we want to be able to not, to avoid mailing it to each of you because that's extremely expensive. So that means we want to, you know, get the design and order it while we're, you're all st still here. But that means, you know, two weeks after the school starts. So two weeks from now, we need to be able to order the t-shirts. So that's, you know, it's a lot of, you know, so that means in two weeks, you guys have to get energized, you know, get into, you know, either on your own or get into small groups and try to come up with a design, okay? Um, so typically, the way it works is it's nothing organized on my end. I mean, I'm just going to be keep pestering you about doing this, but basically, I want students to take charge. Even if it just requires a small subset of students, a couple of students, uh, hopefully there'll be more, maybe five or six. You know, maybe you're good at sketching things, but you're not good with computers, but maybe vice versa, you're good at rendering something that's already been sketched, or maybe you just want to contribute in terms of ideas. Everybody's welcome and everybody is uh, encouraged to participate. So try to do it from the get go, just because we're short on time. And you know, if you have some ideas and you meet a student and say, hey, why don't we, why don't we uh, organize the, uh, why don't we work on this design, I have these ideas. So really start from the very beginning. If, you, if, you, if we wait too long, then it's not gonna happen. Okay, because once we pass a two week uh, uh, date, uh, then it's very hard to, to make them in time because there's a delay in the, in the store has, has some lead, lead time to, to make them. Anyway, so yeah, so please, I'm gonna, you'll, you'll hear me uh, pestering you more about the t-shirts because I really want to make sure every school has a t-shirt. Okay, so welcome again, and now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Patrick to say a few words about the scientific part. Thank you, Joe. Uh, welcome, everyone, as well. Uh, well, I'm going to make a t-shirt. We t-shirt called the Upright One. That's, uh, I was here in 2000. Eleven years ago, uh, a sort leash where, where Apple was still fresh and new, so this was uh, our theme, but you're more than welcome to take something that's in the zeitgeist of, of today. <coughs> so we set up a, a, a school we're pretty excited about. I think um, all four lecturers or all four organizers are going to be here for the four weeks because we all want to see what's happening, and there's a lot of lectures we want to be witnessing and attending ourselves. But just to give you a, a bit of a, a feeling as to how we set up the school, the first two weeks are meant to be to introduce the, the basic tools, the, in, the introductory notions on, on two different families of problems. One that we would call glass. That means glasses broadly defined, you know, structural glasses, thin glasses, and others. And one, you know, fundamentally related to it that's in the theme of computer science. And both of those tracks will go in parallel, and the lectures might seem disconnected at first because they're talking about two different topics, seemingly, but they're deeply related at the methodological and at the physical level. And this is what we're gonna try to, you know, we've tried to split the, the themes or the, the technical details between the two tracks so that you can see a bit more the connections between the two of them. And then weeks three and four are, are meant to be more advanced and application ideas of those two tracks. Uh, having to do with you know, quantum glasses uh, and algorithms and dynamics, for instance, on the right-hand side. But you know, I, I say this because we can't overemphasize how important it is to get on board during the first two weeks. If you don't follow, if you don't take upon yourself to follow and understand what's going on during the first two weeks, not only will you get tired in the third and fourth weeks, but you'll be left behind. 
right? So now's the time to ask questions, to make sure you understand, to organize mini tutorials amongst yourselves with the organizers, with the lecturers, to ask, you know, to, to, be, to be guided through. And uh, I don't know if the, yes, so, uh, so Francesco put a, a few remarks that he put uh, together, right? He's sort of reiterating those, those ideas, ask, oh, is this? Yes, ask questions to organizers, we can organize tutorials. Uh, and, and the point that I wanted to highlight on this slide that some of you have actually been exposed to some of those ideas. None of you have been exposed to all, but some of you have been exposed to some, and we're hoping that amongst yourselves, those people can ask, uh, can work and, and function as resource person uh, to guide or to help you ask questions or to organize or to answer the problem sets. Um, I, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if any of you wants to raise their hand as to people who have or feel they've been exposed to some of the notions that are going to be presented in the first two weeks, you can raise their hands higher, please. Right, so there's uh, Irem. I, I'm missing some, right? So there's, there should be a, of the order of 10 out of 65, we, we estimate. And, there, and I know there's some cheaters because I'm also listening some, missing some hands. So it's, it's a great opportunity for, for, for them and for you to learn and to learn in a new ways and just having someone uh, giving lectures, right? There's a lot of empty spaces in the day. A lot of it is for R&R, &R, but some of it is also for learning in alternate ways uh, such, a, such as this one. Um, the first two weeks are by design, again, challenging, right? So if you feel this is hard, you're normal, you know? That's why you should be here, right? So, so I hope you, you really enjoy and you take on this opportunity to learn uh, and, and to, you know, to feel like this is fresh and, and, and a, new, a new topic once again. Um, I think this is, was there any other? Oh yes, the, the last thing I wanna say before introducing the first lecturer this is a, a shameless plug. I'm actually a member of the GSoft group of APS. GSoft is one of the subgroups or one of the key subgroups within the APS that studies disordered and frustrated systems. And it's a, it's a group because it's lacking about 0.1% of the APS membership to become a division. And therefore, if you have the chance, next time you apply for APS or you renew your APS, uh, Check the, the box for GSoft. As students, it's really, really cheap to, jo to join the first year. And it'd be, it's a great community. There's a lot of activities that we organize and we support this community. And in a sense, we're supporting not this school directly, but the ideas that this school is gathering together. So if you like it, buy the t-shirt. Um, with this, I think I'm running out of, yep, there's a question. Uh, The video, the, the lectures are, where's so Leo? We're not, we're not sending out lectures, but they will be posted on the, in Hangar Day on the website for the mm -hmm. PDF, and so will the video. Okay. Yes. So Eric, uh, sorry, is there yep. a, can you pull that one slide? I thought, uh, Did I skip something important? About, yeah, so there's a proposal box, and uh, we mentioned. Or we'll talk more about it. We'll talk more about it later, later this week. Uh, the first one, but the sort of already mentioned that we're going to have a, like a one minute presentation on the rabbit has the box here, so but, you know, we'll come back to those those in a minute. If there's any urgent questions, please, please ask them now. Otherwise, I'll, I'll ask our first uh, lecturer to walk down the aisle and, and join me in the front. Yeah.